Dipolig, officially the city of Dipolig Filipino, Lungsod ng Dipolig, Chavacano, Ciudad de Dipolig, Subanan, Gembagal Jibanwad Dipolig Bagbenwad Dipolig, Cebuano, Dakbayan Sa Dipolig, is a third-class city and capital of the province of Zamboanga del Norte, Philippines. According to the 2015 census, it has a population of 130,759 people. Geographically, the city is surrounded by rolling hills to the southeast and the Sulu Sea to the north. Dipolig is known for its wild orchids and its sardine industry which stems from the rich fishing area off its shores. It is known as the Gateway to Western Mindanao through the Western Nautical Highway and has also been called the Bottled Sardines Capital of the Philippines. Dipolig can be reached by plane via Dipolig Airport or by ferry at the nearby Pulauan Port in Dapitan City. The construction of a roll-on, roll-off facility at Barangay Galas will allow for the eventual transfer of the service to Dipolig while retaining inter-island operations at Pulauan, which is soon to become a base port. A popular city attraction is the Foreshore Dipolig Boulevard which, though still in its second phase of construction, has become a popular haven for exercise and leisure. It is also the site for various celebrations and festivals in the city. In the third phase of the project, the length of the boulevard will be extended to reach the seaport in Barangay Galas. Geography Dipolig City is known to be as the Gateway to Western Mindanao. It is situated in the northwestern part of the province of Zamboanga del Norte. It is bounded on the north by Dapitan City, on the east by the municipality of Polanco, on the south by the municipality of Sergio Osmeña Sr. and on the west by the municipality of Katipunan. Its land area in 1914 covered an approximate land area of 248,587 hectares under Act No. 302 of the Philippine Islands. It was substantially reduced in 1951 to the current 13,628 hectares, after two barrios of Dipolig were converted into municipalities of Polanco, and Panyan under Executive Order of the President No. 467, dated August 22, 1951. Barangays Dipolig City is politically subdivided into 21 barangays. History Spanish regime Earliest recorded political history of Dipolig started in 1834 with the reorganization of Spanish civil government. At that time, Tulwanan's political territory was still part of the municipality of Dapitan with Don Domingo Ruiz, a native, as its capitan or town executive. Sometime that year, a Spanish recollect missionary arrived in Tulwanan looking for its barrio executive or local chieftain. Upon meeting a native, the missionary asked, ¿Dónde está el capitán? The native understanding only the word, capitán pointed to the west and said in Subanan de Pag, meaning across the river. Guided by his servant, a Tagalog boy named Antonio Subido, the missionary proceeded down river and upon reaching the Boholano settlement, named the place, De Pag. Technically, De Pag and Tulwanan were two different settlements at that time with the former composed of Boholano natives and the latter mostly of Subanan ancestry. When the friar returned to Dapitan, he identified the location of the larger Boholano settlement as De Pag but was not officially written. Frequent conversations by the Spaniards pronounced it in Spanish accent Dipolig which was eventually adopted by the natives. The final political survey surprisingly added the letter L written on it after officially becoming a barrio of Dapitan. From that time Tulwanan's political identity ceased to exist. By the 12th century the Subanan settlers had colonized most of what is now Zamboanga Peninsula region. It was customary for tribes to establish their settlements at the mouth of large river systems due to the abundant food supply. However, due to frequent raids from seafaring Chinese pirates, they decided to move their settlements inland. In the 14th century, Tulwanan was established 6 kilometers inland, adjoining the river near the present-day Barangay Center of Lugdangan. 
In the 15th century, settlers from neighboring Negros and Bohol Islands established coastline settlements in Mindanao but suffered the same raids by Chinese pirates, prompting them to also move their settlements away from the coastline. They established another settlement in what is now called Sianap, a barangay of present-day Polanco town, some 20 kilometers from the coast at Barrio Gulayan, Barangay Gulayan. It was only in 1563 that the first recorded Visayan settlement of some 800 families from Bohol, led by the chieftain Datu Pagwaya, landed in Mindanao and established a coastal settlement in what is now called Dapitan. This settlement was strong enough to repel the Chinese pirates of the Sulu Sea. As a result, Dapitan Bay was seen of many bloody conflicts between Pagwaya's men and Chinese pirates. Mindanao's first Christian settlement in 1565, Don Miguel López de Legazpi who was accompanied by famed navigator Fr. Andrés de Urdaneta, an Augustinian friar, visited the Boholano chieftain Datu Pagwaya on the invitation of Datu Sikatuna. There they found the place of Datu Pagwaya to be a thriving settlement. In his chronicle, Fr. Urdaneta named the place de Quepitan. Peter Carius Peter van den Kier identified the location as de Pito in his cartographic map of 1598. It was later identified as Depite in Robert Dudley's map of 1646. Other names ascribed to the location include Dapido in Sanson's map of 1652 and Dapitan, which can be found in Mall's map of the East Indies, 1729, and in Mario Velarde's map of 1734. After Legazpi S. Visit, the Christianization of Mindanao was officially initiated by the Augustinian friars who arrived with him. In 1581, members of the Society of Jesus came to the Philippines for the purpose of evangelization. When the country was divided among four religious orders in 1598, the Jesuits were given the Diocese of Cebu which covered the Visayas and Mindanao. Thus Dapitan came to be under the jurisdiction of the courageous men of St. Ignatius and it was Father Pascual de Acuña S.J. who started the Jesuit mission there. In 1609, the squadron of Juan Juarez Galinado S.J. defeated the Manguindanao Muslims in a ferocious battle near Dapitan. Also in 1609, a permanent Dapitan mission was founded and thereafter headed by a Jesuit missionary, Father Pedro Gutierrez, marking Dapitan as the center of evangelization in Mindanao. Mission stations were subsequently established later by the Jesuits in Zamboanga, Iligan, Basilan and Butuan. Outside of these areas, however, the whole of Mindanao remained untouched by the Spanish cross. By the 18th century, with the Spanish naval fleet anchored at Dapitan Bay, much of the piracy, now conducted mainly by Moro bandits, was under control within the Sulu Sea. Settlement in coastal areas resumed with new settlers from Negros and Bohol eventually settling in Isab, and Nippon. The largest settlement, however, was made at the mouth of the Dipalig River by the Boholanos who were not associated with Pagwaya. From Ruiz, civil administration changed hands in stable succession, with Martino Bellarmino, who was popular by the name Maglante. Francisco Magallanes, Victorio Govion, another man whose name history record had as Toribio had his chance, followed by Venancio Narvaez, Francisco Orbita, Bautista Narvaez, Martencio Yves and Sabino Bengua. By 1889, administrative designations reverted to capitanes, and those appointed were Martin Fernandez, Tomas Narvacan, Eustachio Cajocan, Simplicio Lacaya, Basilio Tabaliran, Maximiano Ruiz and Bruno Ordinaria in 1898. By February 1894, the Catholic chapel constructed by the Jesuits was renovated for the first time, on an altar designed by Dr. José Rizal to which now stands the Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary Cathedral. By 1896, the friars established Dipalig as a regular parish and installed Father Esteban Yepes its first administrator in 1897. American regime After the transfer of Spanish sovereignty to the United States in 1897, the U.S. occupation forces renamed the Capitan to Presidente Local, with administrative support from a Vice Presidente Local, a Delegado de Justicia and a Delegado de Policia. 
Martin Fernandez was appointed Presidente Local in the year 1900, followed by Diosdado Mercado, Gaudencio Zarilla and Isidro Patangan as Presidente Municipal between 1901 and March 1904. By 1900, Dipalig was a thriving commercial community with new settlers arriving from the island of Cebu, outgrowing its principal town of Dapitan which exclusively remained part of Pagbuaya's clan. By 1910, John Helper, who was previously appointed Secretary of Zamboanga Province, visited Dipalig for two days and conversed with its Principalia and members of the Centro Catolico de Dipalig. He was asked later of the possibility of converting the community to an independent municipality. By 1912, Governor John J. Pershing of the Department of Mindanao and Sulu decreed the separation of Dipalig from Dapitan. By July 1, 1913, Governor John J. Pershing declared Dipalig as a municipality. General Pershing also appointed Pascual T. Martinez as its first municipal mayor. The first public school teachers of Dipalig, during this time, came also from Bohol, particularly Maribajic and other towns. Most were only elementary graduates. But they were well educated by the American soldier teachers in Bohol. One of them was a certain Felisa Ruaya who taught at the American established schools in Dipalig. She lived first near the beach in Punta Coro. Then she married an Adriatico, a native of Polanco. Because the inhabitants converted to Christianity, it cannot be determined whether or not the residents were of Subanan heritage. Felisa Ruaya was the mother of former Zamboanga del Norte Vice Governor Concordio Ruaya Adriatico. Japanese regime in 1942, Japanese Imperial Occupation Forces entered in Dipalig and built of the military garrison of the Imperial Japanese Army was stationed in the municipality. In the same year, the seat of government of the historical province of Zamboanga was transferred from Zamboanga City to Dipalig. In 1942-1945, Filipino troops of the Philippine Commonwealth Army military units and the local recognized guerrillas began the conflicts in the town municipality of Dipalig against the Japanese Imperial forces during the occupation was until the retreating the local resistance fighters were halted by the Japanese after almost four years and before the American Liberation Forces returned and arrived in the town. In 1945, the liberation by the Filipino troops under the 6th, 10th, 102nd and 105th Infantry Division of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and 10th Constabulary Regiment of the Philippine Constabulary entered in Dipalig together with local guerrillas. Governor Matias Castellan Ranillo Sr. noticed that the waters at Punta Coro Wharf were choppy for ships to anchor. Governor Ranillo was determined to provide an alternative access to southern Zamboanga Peninsula. Governor Ranillo's jurisdiction was then the entire Zamboanga Peninsula prior to its division between Del Norte and Del Sur. During Governor Ranillo's term, aviation was a young technology but he made sure that an airfield was established in Dipalig. He was elected governor in 1937 and re-elected in 1940 but his term was cut short when Philippine President Manuel L. Quezon urged him to run as the lone assemblyman of Zamboanga Peninsula. President Quezon fondly called him El Gallo Escondido de Malacanang. In November 1941, he was elected as assemblyman but one week before his scheduled departure for Manila, World War II broke out. On October 30, 1944, upon the request of the recognized guerrillas among them the local regular and constable force of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and Philippine Constabulary during the conflicts against the occupation, he mobilized the able-bodied men of Dipalig and Home Guards who cheerfully volunteered to clear the airfield of grass and shrubs. On March 8, 1945, on Dipalig Airfield, the first American invasion of Zamboanga Peninsula took place. The successful landing at Dipalig Airfield established a base for the subsequent recapture of Japanese-held San Roque Airfield near Zamboanga City, followed by Sanga Sanga in Sulu, and from there to Borneo and the East Indies. The Army then established a general headquarters and military camp base of the Philippine Commonwealth Army and the Philippine Constabulary were stationed in Dipalig on March 9, 1945 to June 30, 1946 during the aftermath of World War II. Philippine Republic and cityhood 
In 1952, Zamboanga Province is separated into two provinces of Zamboanga del Norte and Zamboanga del Sur through Republic Act 711. Dipolig became the capital of Zamboanga del Norte upon creation. By June 21, 1969, through the effort of former Congressman Alberto Q. Ube, Philippine President Ferdinand Marcos signed into law Republic Act 5520 or Charter of the City of Dipolig, making Dipolig a chartered city effective January 1, 1970. The date is both significant and historic as that coincided with the Apollo 11 launching which carried the first men to the moon on June 21, 1969. Mayor Felicissimo Herrera was made the last municipal mayor 1963 to 1970 and the first city mayor of Dipolig 1970 to 1978. On March 8, 1982, the Sangguniang Panlungsod adopted the Dipolig City March composed by Mrs. Antonina O. Romano as the city's official song. Demographics. Local government. Dipolig City is a component city of the province of Zamboanga del Norte. Dipolig City's seat of government, the City Hall, is located at Rizal Avenue in Barangay Central. The local government structure is composed of one mayor, one vice mayor and ten councillors. Each official is elected publicly to a three-year term and can be re-elected up to three terms in succession. The day-to-day -day administration of the city is handled by the city administrator. Climate Economy The city is now one of the major options for local investors from Cebu, Dumaguete, Cagayan de Oro and Davao and for foreign nationalities from India and Taiwan investing in retail, tourism, services, manufacturing, trade, and wholesale. It is also abundant with natural resources in terms of agriculture with fish pond areas and fishing grounds, fish production with approximately 56 fish species being produced, as well as livestock production such as carabao, cattle, horse, goat and pig. Potential investment areas range from agri-based processing such as activated charcoal, desiccated coconut, broiler contract growing, livestock raising, cattle fattening, construction, furniture, marble, low-cost housing projects, feed mill, food processing or packaging such as meat and fish processing, mango processing and packaging. In 2006, a study by the National Statistics Coordination Board NSCB, found Dipolig City to be the wealthiest city per capita in the Zamboanga Peninsula. Within Dipolig, 23.15% of the population was estimated to be living below the poverty line households with a per capita expenditure of under $1 a day. In comparison, the NCSB estimated Zamboanga City and Pagadian as having poverty incidences of 23.81% and 27.15%, respectively. In startling contrast, the poverty rate for the entire province of Zamboanga del Norte with individuals in both rural and urban settings was estimated to be 40.36%. Zamboanga del Norte is one of the Philippines' poorest provinces with a poverty incidence rate of 64.6% in 2003, an increase from 47% in the 2000 statistical figures. Industry Dipolig City is best known for its bottled sardines production. Apart from sardines, industries in Dipolig include DN Ubros Steel Corporation, a member of DN Steel Group of Companies through DN Joint Ventures. Technology Currently, the city is well equipped with telecommunication facilities from landlines, mobile networks and 3G broadband. Retail Local malls and shopping centers in Dipolig City includes Roy Plaza, Rizal Avenue, Central Dipolig Shopping Center, Rizal Avenue Corner Lakaya Street, Central Lee Plaza City Central Dipolig, Quezon Avenue, Mucutic, and City Mall Dipolig, National Highway, STA, Philomena Culture Dipolig shared much of its cultural history with the ancient town of Dapitan to which it once belonged. 
It traces its beginnings long before the Spanish conquistadores set foot on the island of Mindanao. Dipalig was previously known as Tulwanan, in native language, literally meaning a settlement by the river. Its earliest settlers all belonged to the Subanan tribe called Subanan or river people with established religion founded in animism. These descended from the Austronesian peoples who roamed Mindanao and Southeast Asia via land bridges as early as 30,000 years ago later migrations of other tribes were made by water and took place over several thousand years. Transportation Tricycles, Sikids, and Habal Habals are the primary modes of transportation in the city. By land Dipalig has its own bus terminal in Barangay Meputic. It provides daily trip to any places in Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga del Sur, Zamboanga Sibugay, Zamboanga City, Cagayan de Oro City and Misamis Occidental. By water Dipalig used to rely in the nearby port of Pulauan in Dapitan City, especially for trips bound to Dumaguete City and Cebu City. The city can now be reached through Cebu-based Medallion Transport Inc. Docking port is at the Dipalig City Feeder Port in Barangay Galas. Dipalig City to Cebu City Everyday Exec PT Saturday at 7 p.m. and Cebu City to Dipalig City Everyday at 8.30 p.m. Vessel operated, M. V. Lady of Joy and M. V. Lady of Good Voyage. By air. Dipalig Airport IATA, DPL, ICAO, RPMG, is the city's domestic airport located in Barangay Minaug. Daily itinerary trips from and to Manila, and from Cebu through Philippine Airlines and Cebu Pacific. Tourism Attractions Linabo Peak, the 3,003 steps to Linabo Peak offers a panoramic view of the twin cities of Dipalig and Dapitan. It is also the venue for the annual Katkat Sacripicio of Catholic devotees who perform their penitential rites during the Lenten season. Kogon Park, the Kogon Eco Park is a 344-hectare reforestation area situated in Barangay Kogon established in 1958. Mature trees are growing wild in the area, species such as mahogany, teak, humane, lumbayao, molavi, acacia, nara, mayapis, luan, narig, tianong, dugon, lumbayao, rattan and nato. It is also one of the favorite camping sites of different mountaineering groups. Presently, under development in the area are the construction of Information Center, Subanan Valley, picnic cottages, well-landscaped ground at the entrance, parking area, aviary, and different cages for animals. Adjacent to Barangay Kogon is Barangay Dewan, part of the eco-tourism complex housing the Organization of International Spiritual and Cultural Advancement or OISCA Forest Park, a joint project of the OISCA of Japan, locally managed by Hiroshi Ikeda, and the city government of Dipalig. It also houses the Dipalig OISCA Children's Forest Park. The most prominent feature of the park is the Sunkala Falls. Casa Bernado, a century-old house owned by the Bernado family, for tourists. Casa Bernado is developed as Dipalig's Center for Culture and the Arts. The ground floor serves as a venue for visual arts and photography exhibits. ONAY Museum, this is where the collection of nameplates, medals, pictures and other memorabilia of General Alexander Llano, the 38th Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and the 1st Mindanao-born General, is located. The name, O-N-A-Y, came from his last name in reverse. Santa Cruz, the tall cross stands at Punta Coro, the spot where migrating Boholanos landed and to establish a settlement. The cross was erected by the settlers on Rudmas, May 3, 1905, in thanksgiving for their safe journey. Mass was once said at the spot before the Spaniards established a chapel 1.5 kilometers inland along the town's center street, now Rizal Avenue. The town cathedral was later built in 1895 to replace the old church. Dr. José Rizal designed the high altar from a sketch requested by his former professor and former curé of Dipalig, Fr. José Villaclara. 
Dipalig City Hall, built on July 1, 1913, under the administration of General John J. Pershing. The original design of the town wall was the exact replica of the town hall of Maribajic, Bohol, which was designed by the Americans. The original hall was exactly the same size that of Maribojox down to the size of the jail. But today the hall was expanded and its original design cannot be seen anymore. It is located near the Our Lady of the Most Holy Rosary Cathedral and the Plaza Magsaysay. The hall building was constructed under the administration of Mayor Fermin D. Cagatan. The corner street houses the monument of three prominent Dipolognans namely Pascual T. Martinez, the first appointed mayor of Dipolog in 1913-1918, Rev. Fr. Nicasio y Patangan, the first Filipino diocesan priest of Mindanao, and Eugenio R. Margate, a farmer for 25 years who introduced the Margate system of planting rice. Pagsalabuk Circle, located at Estaca Turno Road Junction is the Fountain of Blessings. Pagsalabuk is a Subanan, Lumad term which means togetherness. The statues represent the tri-people of Mindanao, which symbolize the diverse cultures prevailing in Dipolig. The bowl raised to heavens is a gesture of thanksgiving and offering to God Almighty for the generous outpouring of graces and blessings, bountiful harvests and sustained peace and prosperity. Dipolig Bohalana Handicraft and Pasalubong formerly S &J, located at Gen Luna Street Cor Magsaysay near Dipolig Boulevard, Dipolig City, they sell souvenir products and remembrance products. Tourists are welcome to visit and take a look at the shop's products. The souvenir shop is visited by many tourists, both local and foreign. It is owned by Elsa Leones. In late 2010 the original S&J is supposed to be located at Bonifacio Street but then transferred. It is also the premier Pasalubong and souvenir store in the province. Dipolig Boulevard, Dipolig Sunset Boulevard, or Foreshore Development and Wellness Center, is an esplanade in Dipolig, Philippines. It is a future-proof esplanade which involves the development of 1.6 km stretch of foreshore area spanning from Sta. Cruz of Barangay Central to Parak Bularan of Barangay Meputic. Equipped with adequate facilities like basketball courts and playground park, the city boulevard serves as a tourist destination for every young and old to enjoy. It is also the site of the annual Pagsalabuk Festival, motor company trade shows, and sporting events like marathons, triathlons, and dragon boat racing as part of the Dipolig Sports City 2020 vision. With the construction of two commercial buildings, which are now ready for occupancy, the complex also becomes a host to prospective locators who wish to do business in the area, augmenting the presently existing restaurants, bars, and several food and beverage peddlers. Extension is currently underway to extend the boulevard for another kilometer reaching the seaport of Galas making it a total of 2.6 kilometers. When completed, it is expected to contribute in the expansion of commercial activities and protection of coastal areas of the city against large sea waves during typhoon periods. Long-term plans for the boulevard is extending it in both ways of the city to southern part of Olingan and northern part of Barra creating a new river park esplanade. Also included for foreshore development are areas of Minaug and Sikayab that goes beyond the Dipolig Airport. All of the said plans are drafted in the city's blueprint program named SWIGAPORE 2030 that aims in making Dipolig a self-reliant, super city by 2030 in terms of infrastructure, housing, social and health services. Festival Sinalig Sa Dipolig Festival, every third Saturday of January featuring pageantry and street dancing for the Sto. Niño, Katkat Sacripicio at Linabo Peak every Lenten season Pagsalabuk Festival in May with harvest rituals of the Tri People of Mindanao, Subanans, Muslims and Christians, a celebration of unity amidst diversity, Feast of St. Vincent Ferrer during third Saturday of May, at La Sa Dipolig, Dipolig City's founding anniversary, marked July 1 to 6 with sports, cultural, and beauty pageants highlighted with Mutya Sa Dipolig, Dahunag Sa Dipolig on October 7, which is the Feast of the Lady of the Holy Rosary. Pasco Sa Dipolig PASADI, showcases nightly shows by Dipolig's respective 21 barangays in the month of December. Salog Sa Zamboanga del Norte, Zamboanga del Norte's founding anniversary celebration, celebrated every first week of June. Notable people Matias Castilian Ranillo Sr., B. 1898, D. 
1947, Governor of the Undivided Province of Zamboanga, 1937 to 1940, and Lone District Congressman of the same province, 1941 to 1946. Juanita Amatong, B. 1935, former Secretary of the Department of Finance, 2003 to 2005. Sister cities of Dipolig. See also Zamboanga del Norte List of schools in Dipolig References External links City of Dipolig website Old website for City of Dipolig Philippine Standard Geographic Code